I like to ride to a certain section of my garden and then get out with my dog and sit on a bench or walk around looking at the plants. And then all of a sudden I maybe will end up down in the ravine where the water's running and there may be one section of sun coming through, hitting the water. And I can sit there for quite a while and think of all the good things in my mind. was started back in, in 1927. The McBriars had come out here and bought about, uh, well, let's see, there's 11 acres in this piece and four below, and there was five next door. Oh, let me take this hat off. It's making my forehead heavy. And anyway, those are a bunch of rhododendron pill, you know, pins and from Edinburgh, Scotland, a few places where I've always gone to hear really knowledgeable people talk about the beauty of rhododendrons and of azaleas, which became the love of my life after I came here from California as a bride. Of course, I missed all the beautiful roses in California and everything else, but I found that the plants indigenous to this area are maybe even far superior because they live through the winter and they and they thrive and they come back and, and uh, well, I love the seasons, and that's why I am here and have always been here since I came in 1946 as a bride of James McBriar, the son of the family that had bought this place in 1915. I want people to know this garden means nothing if people don't come to sit and enjoy and watch the changing seasons. My mother, some people said, had a green thumb. We always called her thumb the May thumb because her name was May. And in May is when you see whether your thumb has been working. That's when the plants all come to life and all, and the little plants begin to grow. There were two people influenced my life out here. Number one, I ran into a man whose name was Lester Freeland. He had all the unusual trees. He said to me, but what are you going to do down in the ravine? And I said, well, I've always loved primroses and we never had primroses really in California. And uh, he said, how about a primrose walk? Why don't you go to work on a primrose walk? So that's when I started developing all my primroses and down the, the stone walk. And then when we came down to the ravine and here was the dam, he said, of course, you could develop a bog garden here. Go study bog gardens. So I decided, great, I'd start a bog garden. Plants don't stay just dormant. They either grow and they become more beautiful and stronger, or they don't. So that makes the spring more of a nervous time in a garden. Beautiful, but nervous. Is it gonna bloom today? Is that plant gonna make it? And then when one is in full bloom, you say, oh, wonderful, look at it. It's just gorgeous this year.
my prize plants are here on my property and I keep raising them and giving them away to people. One is called Blossom's Blaze and the other one is called uh, Made of Grace and another one is called Bountiful. I would hope that they might come with enough time that they can sit down on one of the benches or they can sit across the ravine and listen to the stream fall over the little spill. They're always saying, I'd love to come back here to read, and I always say, well, why don't you? But mainly what I like is when a small club comes, maybe just 20 ladies, and they come after work and they come in the evening and we sit and I, I talk to them and, and give a small lecture, and then they go around the gardens. This is a park. This is not an arboretum. It is a park. And that's why I renamed my place, not just Briar Hill Garden. I now call it Briar Park. I like everything in proportion to each other, the strength, the color, but I appreciate the fact that one color makes another color more beautiful. Same as one person can make another person more beautiful. But I try to tell people, look at your land. I, do you want a room to sit in outside? or do you want to just look out your windows? But whatever you do, don't put tombstone planting around your house. Are you planting for the people going down the street or are you planting for yourself? Do you want to look out your window and see your beautiful plants and have them at a distance and create a grouping? Or are you gonna make the grouping right underneath your window so when someone goes down the street they can say, oh, they put a new plant in. Someone came walking up the hill that lived next door here, and her name was Jessie Coleman. She brought me a little tree. She said, Blossom, this is a seedling tree from my cornucusa. And I said, a cornucusa? What's that? She told me that it was a tree that had been brought to her from Japan. This is one of the seedlings from the original tree behind me here. Do you see the tree right back here that's turning red? That with the red balls? That is one of my seedlings from the original cornucusa tree.
This garden believes in the natural good trees more than the specimen trees. We have some specimen trees, but this is not a collector's garden of odd trees. It's not a collector's garden of odd plants. This is a garden of interest. are here and many gardens make up the big garden and you're welcome to come at any time and I will share if you see something you like that you would like a piece of I'm more than happy if I'm here to share a root of it with you and if I have some baby trees growing and you really really want one of them Maybe you can even have a small starlight cornice. So come and visit us when you would like to at Briar Park on Briar Hill Road. Thank you. <laughs>